Thank you so much for that very nice introduction, Madam President. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. It really is um, a great pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for recognizing my wife, Christine Grady, who, as you said, wrote an editorial about me in the American Journal of Nursing, which proves the point that you can do anything if somebody pays you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I do want to take this opportunity before I give my formal remarks to recognize Christine and my children for what they have gone through over the past three years because I have, as we all know, been rather severely attacked, but I have not been the only one they have. And I just think the fact that that happens in this country, uh, I have to say, quite frankly, to me, is it just uh, the erosion of our democracy when innocent people like that. But, you know, that's the way it is. So vote, will you please? <laughs> uh, Okay, so get on with it. I'm very honored and delighted to be here to help commemorate a really important uh, event, the 50th anniversary of the National Foundation of Infectious Diseases. And it's particularly meaningful to me because the anniversary, as some of you may know, coincides with the end of my 54th career, 54 year career at the National Institutes of Health and my almost four-decade career as the director of NIAID. And I had the privilege uh, in 1988 of sitting in an audience like this and listening as my dear friend and my patient, actually, Charles Everett Chick Coop received the first Maxwell Finland Award. Did not realize that the next year in 1989 that I would receive the Maxwell Finland Award. I was only 13 years old at the time. <laughs> it, was, it was very surprising to me. Uh, I was a bit precocious, but you know. <laughs> so upon reflection, what really stands out during those decades was the striking evolution of our field of infectious diseases, which indelibly shaped my career as well as your very organization. So when I came to the NIH in 1968, and my dear friend, Rochelle Walensky, just hurt my feelings by saying, Tony, that was the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> <When I, laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Good friend. Um, I took a combined fellowship in infectious diseases and clinical immunology I was really unaware, somewhat naively, that many experts had been opining that the, with the advent of highly effective vaccines and antibiotics, that the threat of infectious diseases was quickly waning. Of course, that somewhat naive and provincial view overlooked the fact that malaria, tuberculosis, and other diseases were still killing millions of people around the world each year. Now, amid the uncertainty about the continued relevance of infectious diseases, we can be profoundly thankful that the founders, who you've just heard about, of the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases had the foresight in 1973 to envision the ongoing need for a non-governmental organization to support the research, education, and prevention of infectious diseases. Yet, five years later, after 1973, I recall being taken aback to read a provocative article in the New England Journal of Medicine by my very dear friend, Dr. Robert Petersdorf, an icon in infectious diseases and one of my early mentors who suggested that infectious diseases as an internal medicine subspecialty was fading into oblivion. And I quote, 
Even with my great personal loyalties to infectious diseases, Bob wrote, I cannot conceive of the need for 309 more infectious diseases experts, which was the number of people who applied for infectious diseases fellowship, unless they spent their time culturing each other. <laughs> he said that in the New England Journal of Medicine. So in 1981, the idea that the heyday of infectious diseases was over was very swiftly dispelled by the emergence of a novel, highly pathogenic virus that we all know so well, HIV, and the recognition of the first cases of what we now call AIDS. If the emergence of HIV had any silver lining at all, it is that the disease sharply increased interest in infectious diseases among young people entering the field of medicine. And to his credit, my friend Bob Petersdorf later admitted that he had not fully appreciated the potential impact of the concept of emerging infectious diseases. Of course, the threat and reality of emerging infectious unfortunately did not stop with HIV AIDS, and that really has framed my own personal career. For during my tenure as the director of NIAID, the world faced numerous challenges from newly emerging, re-emerging, or deliberately introduced infections, among them anthrax, SARS, H1N1, pandemic flu, MERS, Ebola, Zika, and most recently, the loudest wake-up call in more than a century, COVID-19. Throughout, the NFID never faltered as an ally of NIAID and of infectious diseases and public health professionals on the front lines everywhere, strongly advocating for infectious diseases research staunchly supporting immunization programs and providing infectious diseases education for healthcare professionals and the public alike. Today, in addition to the obvious need to continue to improve on our capabilities of dealing with established infectious diseases such as malaria and TB, Recent history has clearly demonstrated that in our globally connected world, emerging infectious diseases are a major dynamic factor of life, perpetually challenging the well-being of people worldwide. Although the COVID-19 pandemic tested our scientific ingenuity, personal resilience, and compassion, we can be heartened by the fact that it also catalyzed the research community to unprecedented heights in developing safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines in record time. And so, I am hopeful that the many sobering lessons we've learned from the COVID-19 pandemic will indeed help us better prepare for the inevitable infectious diseases outbreak in all of our futures. So I want to thank the leadership of the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases for your steadfast support. Tonight, I am happy to join everyone here celebrating five decades of outstanding contributions and accomplishments by your organization to protecting public health. My heartfelt congratulations on a job well done. Thank you.